Hey guys, this is Jay Calder with Jay Unboxing here giving you a personal prediction for Devin Haney versus George Cambosis 2. And as always, this is just my take. Your prediction can be left down in the comments section below. Would love to hear them all. Interesting rematch, one that was sort of coming after a fairly one-sided display that favored Haney, but again, rematches can always be a little bit tricky, so would love to hear your comments on this one down in the comments below. A little bit of fight info here. You have Haney versus Cambosis taking place at the Road Laver Arena in Melbourne, Australia, airing on ESPN. And this is for all of the lightweight gold available as it is possessed by Haney, the champion now, after his successful fight against Cambosa earlier this year where he picked up all of the straps. Rematches can be weird. Kind of hard to grasp sometimes. That said, this does seem a bit more obvious. Right? I mean, you had such a finite conclusion in that first encounter with Cambosis having no answer for the work of Haney. That said, two questions to answer here. Does Cambosis do anything differently, and can he? And can Haney stay at that high of a level for another potentially 12 rounds? Because, quite honestly, this is what you expect this fight to be, a decision win for Haney. However, this is perhaps a more determined Cambosis coming back from his first career loss, and of course, having lost all of his gold in the process. So, interesting one nonetheless. Let's get into this one and see what we can come up with. Starting with the champion here, for Haney to win, vary the lead left hand. Large parts of the first fight were effectively controlled by the left hand. Here, you're going to want to do the same. It's a very skilled left hand. It keeps you relatively safe because you can kind of control the distance with your longer limbs, and it's just a shot you throw well. But again, vary it. Vary the speed, the power. Go upstairs, go downstairs. Do as you did in that first fight, but just make sure you're nice, sharp, and crisp, and try to keep it less predictable. The less predictable, the better, of course. Also, make sure to turn that over into the left hook. You did that pretty well in the first fight, but again, if you can do that a bit more, all the better. Just make sure to avoid the left hand. Cambosis will look to aim and time and return, as I'm sure that's going to be something he is looking to implement in this fight. I would also say press him backwards. Cambosis can't win going backwards. That's just my personal take. He looked to box in that first fight. No bueno. Was not going to work for him. Going backwards really just makes it worse if he's trying to box you. He's going to need to be more active, but you want to try and mitigate that by backing him up. Use the jab and inside physically keep him from coming in. You're a stronger than people expect kind of guy. Use that sort of strength and physicality. Time the rushes that he's going to try and throw at you, especially with those counters that you can and make him second guess. And as he's trying to come in while you're throwing that right hand or jabbing to the body and just offsetting him, it's going to frustrate him and potentially give you some more openings as he tries to force the returns. And I would have finally say here, step on the gas later on. One area to ensure you keep the gold is take the fight away from him late. You don't want to give them any chance to rob you. This is the second fight you'll be taking in his home country, or rather in his home continent. There's no reason to give them any chance to try and rob you in this fight. So make sure you stamp the performance, so to speak. Don't want it to look less convincing and have them giving him sort of improvement points. No, make it count finish strong so that this way the lasting impression is a domination from the american now for cambosis to win i think you want to get your hands busier boxing isn't going to do it for you in this one it just isn't does that mean get wild or reckless or crazy no but it means get busier you have to push the action encourage some exchanges get messy be willing to take a shot that's just something you're going to need to do you're fighting in your own backyard in this particular case. Busier could mean the difference between a close round lost or won. Is that necessarily fair all the time? Of course not, but boxing isn't fair. Boxing is boxing. And that means you have to take advantage of your circumstances. You're at home, get your hands busy, make it a messier fight. You might get credit for simply looking better. And that's what you're gonna try and do in this fight by letting your hands go a bit more. I would also say time the uppercut. Probably the best punch you had in that first encounter, and it's certainly something you should try to implement a bit more. That's an area that Haney can be open for when he reaches with that jab. So if you can time it, it does a couple things. It scores for you, potentially hurts him or rocks him, of course, but it also maybe stops him from trying to get so busy with that left hand if you're negating it with a shot of your own. The left hand will be busy. Step in and time the uppercut, sometimes to the body. Make him hit anywhere, anything you can. Just score and keep him guessing with it, and you'll have all the better success with it as the night progresses. And as I've sort of alluded to in these final two points, be willing to trade. As mentioned, exchanges may be key. Straight up boxing, Haney will have 
most people's numbers, and he certainly had yours in the previous encounter. Where you can change that is by making a bit more of a game of who lands best. Sometimes, at least, gives you a better chance than simply trying to strictly box. You need to be willing to get hit in order to land those potentially fight-changing shots. You can lead off sometimes with that uppercut as a counter shot. You need a jab of your own, double it up. You need to push him back. Again, going backwards does you no favors. So be more active, push the action a bit more, counter when you can, and just try to keep those hands moving and be willing to engage in those exchanges. Now, in terms of my pick here, while Cambosos might make more of a case in this encounter, it's still a fight I see going the American's way. Cambosos will try to come out fiery in the first couple of rounds, but the jab and overall left hand work of Haney will tame him in those middle frames, or at least by those middle frames once again. This will carry into the latter frames, where, though the Aussie will make more of a late push to seize control of the fighter, land something meaningful, I still think Haney will have the advantage. Haney will be comfortable and skate to victory while picking up the needed rounds. Could be closer on the cards due to Cambosos' push that I think happens, so I do think that will kind of make a difference, but still should be a victory for Haney, in my opinion. Winner, Devin Haney via split or majority decision, though it probably should be a unanimous decision, but again, these sorts of things happen. Now, in terms of the betting odds here, you have Haney at a very sizable favor coming in at a minus 900. No action there that I really care about, to be honest with you. And you have Cambosos as a solid, solid underdog at a plus 530. If you think the Aussie has a chance, again, it's in his hometown, so to speak. He is going to be a fiery fighter. He's not trash. He knows how to fight. That's certainly some decent odds you might want to look into, but for the most part, I just don't necessarily see it happening in this encounter. In terms of the over-under, did not find one, but I think the safe bet here is an over. Haney's likely to win. He's likely to make it a decision. And even if Cambosis does win, the way that I see it happening is in a closer-than-expected fight that he happens to get awarded. That would still be the over there, of course, so in any event, when you find those odds, that might be what you might want to look into. And my prediction record as of September 30th is 29-10-1 with 10 exact, but let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Do you think the judges will play a big part in this fight? What are your thoughts, your predictions, bets, so on and so forth? Please be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter at jcalderon underscore J-O-B. You can email me at jgonboxing at gmail.com. would love to hear from you there. Also, be sure to check out jgonboxing.com for schedule, results, betting odds, rankings, and more. And as always, until next time.